Hey guys, welcome back to the Obi Thor Alliance. And what are we doing today, Jacob? What if Marvel wasn't accessible as it is today? So we're going to do a whole bunch of scenarios of what could have been and would have been if Marvel did things differently. So stick around if you want to find out what we think. So, what if Marvel wasn't so successful as a, a scenario? So, how do we want to do this? So let's so let's imagine Marvel, you know, never took off and they didn't get things right. What? Do you, how do you think the landscape of um, current superhero movies would be? I would think that for starters, I think I'm the first Iron Man wouldn't been as successful for whatever reason if they didn't do the story right or didn't have the budget and then I think Marvel would have gone well we sh we shouldn't do this and then DC would have gone well kind of gone on the bandwagon and started what they wanted to do and basically they would have become the juggernaut hmm. I think you know if let's say the first Iron Man movie didn't hit and yeah. like, it wasn't successful then that was really the catalyst for the rest of the movies, what we're 30 plus movies in now, of the current like DCU kind of MCU franchises that are going on. So if that if that didn't kick off, there's a whole lot of movies that didn't exist and a whole lot of superstars that have came from the Marvel franchise that wouldn't have, you know, leapfrogged their career. I think of people like Chris Hemsworth, as yeah. much as he's a great actor, if he didn't become Thor I don't think he gets a lot of the other acting roles he gets now. No. And I think Marvel have... Yes, they've picked some superstars to begin with. People like Robert Downey Jr., you know, already a superstar. But there's a lot of kind of nobodies that have became... Well, I won't say nobodies, but a lot of people that were, you know, on the precipice of, you know, not being a superstar, get this role and then go through the roof. Like someone like Chris Pratt comes mm. to mind, you know, played a lot of... He's been in some sitcoms, he's been in some comedies, but he never really got those mega roles. And from doing something like being Star-Lord, who's still a comedical role, he has now been put into some mega movies and shows as, you know, in serious roles. Think of uh, Chris Evans as the same. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of his first things he did was not another teen movie, which is just like one of those scary movie parody spin-offs. Like, in look at what he's in now, you know, they, they go on to do massive things, so it's kind of definitely helped push some people's careers forward. As I said, some people are already mega stars, you know, Robert Downey Jr., Scarlett Johansson, things like that, but a lot of others that kind of really pushed it forward. Yeah. Um, so I think that would have changed, and I agree with you, I think maybe DC would have uh, maybe continued to make the same content, but they would have been seen a bit differently, because at the moment people seem to think, Marvel is the next echelon up from DC, but maybe if you know Marvel didn't have that success, would DC be seen as the top dog? I think so. And would have that changed the way DC did some of their movies? Yeah. So DC's definitely gone a dark path, and I think MCU have gone a more um, comedy path in their roles. Obviously, their movies do have some serious dark elements, but they do like to throw in, you know, the one-liners, the bit of slapstick comedy, things like that. How do you think what would have happened if MC, if the MCU didn't do that? Let's say they just went serious. Because I think, you know, the first Thor was kind of serious. I think the first... Uh, I think the first I, um, Captain America was fairly serious. They didn't really chuck in too much comedy. What do you think if they never really swapped to that, you know, Thor being a larrikin and, you know, Star-Lord just being, you know... and like that, where do you think they would have went? Well, Guardians of the Galaxy either wouldn't have came out, or would have been a very different movie, and I don't think would have uh, been as a smash hit because people wouldn't have liked it as much. And Thor, Love and Thor, Red and Rock would have been such a different movie. I don't think it would have worked as much because it had the humor and it had the seriousness. I think if they didn't go that route of being funny they would have lost a large proportion of their audience because you've got the fan boys and girls who love it because of the comics because of the superheroes because of the storyline and then there's kind of i won't say bandwagon but people that have got into it because people are like it's pretty funny like watch this you're gonna like it and they kind of 
the comedy and the, the lightheartedness at times keeps them engaged and then that widens their base where something like DC, if you don't like Batman and you don't have interest in superheroes, why would you sit there and watch three hours of the Batman? Mm. I think it's a great movie and it's a really good detective film, but it's very hard to convince someone that has no interest in superheroes, in Batman, to sit through three hours of something, you know? Where someone goes, you know what? Like, I think Thor Love and Thunder was over the top, way too mm. much comedy. But for someone that isn't a fan of superheroes, may have watched this and thought, this movie's hilarious. Like, how good's this? Where I'm sitting there going, oh, they've overdone it. You know, yeah. why did they go so far? But it allows them to tra uh, attract more people. Do you think Marvel has influenced DC a little bit in that way? Yes. Like, what what are some examples of some DC... Um, and Yeah, DC... Uh, movies that have kind of copied that formula. Rushing to make their Justice League uh, film too much instead of doing phase one with, you know, Batman film, uh, Superman film, Wonder Woman film. They kind of just rushed to the Justice League with only just Batman v Superman and Man of Steel. They did, like, Super Superman's origin Batman v Superman and then straight to Justice League so they rushed yeah I think they wanted to compete they're like the Avengers are already out we yeah. need to compete with them and yeah I think they they sent out an unfinished product ignoring the whole um, Schneider's cut scenario I think even if that was the one that come out in the original first place it was still rushed, you know. Yeah. They, they they try to skip too many steps and they haven't built the world up enough. And, you know, some of the origin films in the DC are fantastic, but the team-ups they haven't got right. No. Or I think, uh, I think the MCU has the team-ups really well. I think they've done a great job with team-ups. They're even at a point now where they don't even necessarily do origins. All the origin stories can come later after you've already seen some of their team-up in it still works like i think they've got a very very good formula with things do you think dc content has been influenced by marvel in terms of uh comedy like i'm thinking show things like shazam uh the suicide squads they've kind of try to borrow a formula they've seen working i think so yeah when you think about it, dc haven't really tried something on their own they've either gone we need to make our team up movie or we need to make their comedy movie, really set for the Joker and the Batman. They're the two kind of own projects. Mm. Which I think out of all the recent superhero, you know, comic book content, I think the Joker and the Batman are the two best movies, in my opinion, like absolute standouts. So they're, you know, they're movies where they've gone really plot focused mm. and they've nailed it. Uh, Marvel obviously went for, you know, let's try and be like have this really massive intertwined universe multiverse with a bit of comedy and they've nailed that but they haven't really nailed they don't really go with something with such an awesome plot the plots kind of you know not that they have poor plots they just haven't gone so dark and in depth as something like the joker mm -hmm. like that movie's it all not funny like that movie's so serious but amazing um so yeah back to my original point i think um Marvel has influenced DC. Except for two movies. Yeah, so if DC, so if Marvel didn't have the success they had, do we think DC ever would have cottoned onto this idea of trying to be funny within a superhero franchise? They probably would, but they would be more making movies like I think the Batman and the Joker. Yeah, I reckon Shazam wouldn't exist. No. I don't think I I, I didn't know much about Shazam prior to it coming out, but I don't think they would have experimented with that type of comedy without seeing it work many times over with um, the Marvel Universe. I think if that was the first kind of hero film where they went for that light-hearted comedy, I think it probably would have fell flat on its face because people wouldn't have been ready for it. Yeah. I think Mar Marvel built us up for that. And now, you know, you see shows like um, Peacemaker, which is amazing but so outrageous like it's such an outrage like even to the fact of the starting like intro music is so outrageous but it, it's it, it would not have we wouldn't have been ready for that if it wasn't for what marvel had set up i don't think 
but Marvel run the risk of going too far, which is what we've seen in uh, Thor Love and Thunder. A movie that was really built up and like people looking forward to it. I think they went so far with the comedy, so they got to kind of dial it back a bit. What do you think the TV show direction would have been if Marvel wasn't successful? Do you think we would have got shows like The Boys or Peacemaker or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Or do you think they would have even wanted to make their Loki and... Or even I done those? I think he would have got some shows. He would have got, you know, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, mm. the Luke Cage's, the Jessica Jones, the Daredevils. Because mm. they're, you know, fairly semi-serious or not too high budget either so they can get away with making those but I think some of these like one-off kind of limited series no I don't think we would have seen you know like if Marvel wasn't an absolute juggernaut of making money there's no way they would have made She-Hulk or um, Miss Marvel hmm. like those shows you they've probably made a lot of money because of the popularity built up from other things but I think if you were you know, oh, this show's make or break. If it's not successful, Marvel will cease to exist. They would not have brought those out. It was too risky. Uh, so I think it allowed them to experiment with different things. You know, we get to see shows like Mar like Loki, who's all like so great. I, I don't think they would have definitely gone on to make Moon Knight like that. Mm. That had to be literally. We have so much money. Let's just make something because I think if you really had to plan out your projects and pick and choose what you can feasibly do, I think that would have, you know, got cut off. You know, they would have like, nah, we just need to focus on movies. But, yeah, because of the how big it's got, it's allowed them to make just shows for the sake of it, really. They can just bring them out and go, yeah, this will be popular. Would The Boys still be around? I don't think so. I think The Boys is, you know, kind of a satire look at the DC, the MCU, and it's, it's really clever, even though I think the characters are loosely based off of like the Justice League I think that they require Marvel for it to hit you know if 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 we weren't living in a society where we were getting Marvel movies and shows everywhere you know con content you know lunch boxes merchandises everything the boys wouldn't hit the same but we watch it and we go yeah you know what? that is happening that is like RC yes the superheroes in our world don't exist and we don't interact with them but we go you know Marvel is like the Vought company in some way or another so it, it has more of an impact where I think without Mar like Marvel having such a large influence on that we would have the boys wouldn't have hit the same we'd be like this is stupid this what in what world would people worship superheroes and go see these movies and pay for like all this merchandise it just you needed the success of Marvel for the boys to make sense mm. so I think yeah the boys for sure would have not been successful or not even existed because it's very heavily influenced how do you think the world would be if DC was the king well I think we'd definitely be used to, we would come accustomed to these darker broodier mm. hero movies which I'm liking I hope they can bring out more of them I like when DC go both ways I think I think um Shazam, fantastic. Peacemaker, fantastic. We've got, in terms of the dark, broody side, we've got the Joker, we've got the Batman. But Black Adam sits in the middle. I think that's, I think it failed. I think it's got to be either way. They try and make it this epic story, but then try and add some comedy. It just sits in the middle and doesn't work. I think they need to go with both. Or if I had a preference, I would say just stick to quality storylines. I think if... You know, the Dark Knight franchise is so good. And, you know, the storyline's great. The acting's great. If they just kept bringing that out, I'd be happy. Chuck in a bit of comedy, long as it sticks, that's fine. But those ones in between, you know, I'm talking the Suicide Squad movies. I'm talking Birds of Prey. Just unnecessary garbage, really. So, but it's unlikely they're going to bring out awesome movies a series and then happen to just nail the comedy on the other side they've got to have that bit in between to find where their gauge is but yeah i think mark i think dc reigns supreme and we get you know probably a lot more dark and serious movies you know probably a lot less content that's something dc do so we're looking at you know one movie every two years from a particular franchise you know 
big time directors, you know, your Michael Bay's, your, you know, like, you know, Steven Spielberg's maybe, like just big time directors and big time actors. I think that's what we've become accustomed to. We're at the moment where we're used to 10 movies a year and, you know, three or four shows by DC. It's just um, Marvel. Marvel, sorry. So we'd, we've came accustomed to that. So I think we, would, we wouldn't we would have that luxury of DC reign supreme. Do you think it's better that Marvel is the supreme one or do you think it would it would be better if DC actually was? No, I'm happy with Marvel being supreme as long as DC keep bringing out good stuff because I, you know, we're, we're fortunate enough to get both. Mm. I just hope that DC doesn't bring out filler content. It doesn't need to. Let Marvel make the filler content. Just focus on good projects, you know. The Batman 2, the Joker 2, you know, continue to make more Aquaman movies, try and reclaim what went wrong with uh, Wonder Woman. And, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with Superman with Henry Cavill, so we'll just put that on the, the back burner. What do you think DC did wrong by their mistakes by copying Marvel? I think they try to half ass it in the middle. I think they tried to, you know, like the Suicide Squad, its premise wasn't that great, and then they tried to add the comedy to it, so it was just kind of both. It's like bad plot, bad premise, not that funny. And then even the the more recent Suicide Squad movie was the same, but from that, they got it right by adding Peacemaker. So mm. you'd, like they kind of learnt from that. I think Peacemaker kind of nails it. They, they've just this time gone all out just silly. Mm. Like even to the fact of the villain and what's going on in that show is just silly, but it works where they try to do it in between. Like the, the most recent Suicide Squad movie, the villain was basically like setting up for Starro, which is a huge part of the DC universe. And they kind of half-assed it with a comedical attempt at that. I think that's poor. As like imagine if Marvel made a joke of, you know, Thanos. Like it just wouldn't work. You know, like they've got to take you got to take a villain serious, and he probably deserved something a bit better. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the uh, what if scenario. In the comments section below, maybe uh, type down what you would like us to do thank you for watching hit the notification bell see you in the next video and as always you're awesome and see you next time